Hello, good people of YouTube. Today we have the brand new, just released in the last patch with a whole slew of other premium ships, the Tier 9 Premium German Super Cruiser Gear. This is one of the first German Super Cruisers introduced into the game, along with the Siegfried, which I'll be having a review come out on that tomorrow, hopefully. And for all intents and purposes, the Siegfried and the Aegir are pretty much the same except for the main battery guns, but we'll get more into that in the Siegfried review. So right now I have Aegir in port, no captain skills have been assigned, no modules have been equipped. So let's go ahead and go over her stats starting with her armor. So she has a 27mm bow, no icebreaker bow or anything like that. Bottom is 40mm. Her upper armor belt is 90 millimeters her armor belt proper is 190 millimeters at the waterline and then again another 190 millimeter slat beneath that with 27 millimeters I'm assuming that's her torpedo protection oh it is and then her bottom citadel is 40 millimeters stern again 27 millimeters stern deck 27 millimeters her mid deck is 30 millimeters. That is all. Yep, that's the entire middle of the ship. Her bow deck is 27 millimeters, and her turrets are 360 millimeters on the front, 220 on the side, 150 on the angle plate there, and then 130, mm, 130 millimeters on top of that, with a little 150 millimeter angle bit there, and her counting tower is 200 millimeters all right so hit points wise she has 62,850 hit points with 37 percent torpedo damage reductions that, that's actually pretty good on a super cruiser well that's good for the Germans in general as well so her main battery she has nine 305 millimeter guns and I do believe they are essentially the same which is this uh, L56 SKC 39 is that the same yep the same as the Odin so they have a 20 second reload time a 30 second 180 time maximum dispersion of 203 meters with an HE shell that is the same as the Odin maximum HE shell damage 3600 with a 27 percent chance of starting a fire now her AP shell is actually a little different than the Odin <sighs> Her AP shell, the maximum damage is 9,100, whereas on the Odin, it is 9,400. Do, do they use the same shell? Uh, L3.8, and then it shoots L... Okay, same shell, but 300 less damage than the Odin, with a maximum firing range of 18.5 kilometers, and both the AP and HE shell have a velocity of... 865 meters a second. Now her secondary battery guns. She has 18 128 millimeter guns with a 3.6 second reload time, a 5% chance of starting a fire, that, and the secondaries do 1500 damage per shell. And of course, since they are German 128 millimeter guns, they can pin 32 millimeters off armor. But they only have a range of 5.3 kilometers base. Uh, this is not the German Super Cruiser that you do the Mimi secondary build on. That would be the Siegfried. A defense is 87, which is pretty good for Germans, and 87, well, it would be nice if A actually did anything nowadays, but that's what it is. Maximum speed of 33.5 th uh, knots with a rudder shift time of 14 seconds. Concealment uh, base is 14.7. All right, so an interesting ship that we have here. Uh, I do like the way the ship looks. Model work is very, very, very well done. Looks like a very beefy super cruiser. So I'm going to go ahead and put some modules and captain skills on her, and I will meet back up with you guys here in a second. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention was her torpedoes. And again, I do believe these, yeah, these are turpids, it's torpedoes. So same thing as the Turpic, six kilometer range, 13,700 damage per torpedo. All right, so 
being that this isn't a secondary build German ship, uh, <laughs> I decided to go with the pretty standard kind of super cruiser slash tank build. Uh, so I have main battery, main armaments mod mod one. My bad. Damage control one, aiming systems mod one, damage control two, concealment, and then main battery mod three. I may switch swap this out with a range mod uh, for the second impressions review, but for now we're gonna go with that. Uh, cap the build since again I don't have any high point German captains that aren't a secondary build. I didn't want to have to respec them, so I'm using the captain that I actually got with the Graf Spee for the Odin event. He's only a 10 point commander, so this is basically a bare bones build for the uh, a gear here. So I got preventive maintenance, adrenaline rush, superintendent, and concealment. If I had more points, I would probably then go for uh, something along the lines of uh, fire prevention and uh, basic sub survivability, and probably a pretty standard tank build for that. Oh, and of course, NLG turrets, but that's neither here nor there. So now her guns have a 34 second turret traverse time, but they still they reload down 17 seconds, so that's pretty nice. And her concealment now is 11.9 kilometers, also very nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw flags on her and then take her into battle. All right, so uh, fast forward a day, and unfortunately, because I'm in the middle of doing four ship reviews, some of the audio files got mixed up and I accidentally deleted the live reaction to the match going on right now. So, I'm sorry. But I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the uh, gear and how, how it works, how, how she feels and all that right now. Um, so overall, very, very, very good cruiser. And honestly, the Siegfried video should have came out yesterday. Um, there are a couple of differences between the Siegfried and the gear that I didn't notice because honestly when I was doing the Siegfried video I was very tired and when I was doing the intro into this video I was honestly very tired as well. You may have noticed that in my voice but it's a day later and I got to sleep. So anyway, um, the torpedo tubes in the Siegfried, they are in the hull. In the on the Agir they are on the deck and the Agir has slightly better torpedo angles as well and the Agir has one more sec secondary turret per side than the Siegfried I thought that was an odd choice I guess they thought if it had those four more 128 millimeter guns on the Siegfried then the it would have been too much with the uh, secondary range but you know whatever anyway back to the just the Agir now so the Agir her guns are incredibly reliable they don't really fly all, all over the place like you may have seen in yesterday's video about Siegfried where yes she does have incredible dispersion most of the time but there's still that one that salvo every now and then where the shells kind of go wherever they want to go on the gear there's barely any of that and the match you're watching now again it's the same build that I used that, that I put on the ship at the start of the video and you can see for yourself how incredibly reliable and consistent these guns are. So you have all that going for there. Again, they're still pretty much the same guns as the Odin, but as you can tell, much more accurate and consistent. And the ship itself, pretty dang tough. And the whole, as far as the armor layout goes, it's pretty much the same as the Siegfried. So the beating that the Siegfried took yesterday in yesterday's video, it's it's the same thing as the Agir. Now in the this a gear match you're watching right now or a agar i'm pretty sure it's a gear again i'm i apologize I apologize if i mispronounce it you'll see there's a point where a um a Sofesky soyuz shoots at me and i'm right in front of him but he doesn't hit aim for my bow he hits my armor uh belt and it completely bounces off so it can do that but you know most super cruisers can do that anyway but it's a tough ship and the torpedoes are nice i haven't really used them a whole lot and my thing with torpedoes is that you really shouldn't be trying to use them if you're in a ship that has torpedoes that isn't you know like a like a uh, a dedicated torpedo boat something like the shimikaze you should just use them when the opportunity presents itself and in this uh match you're watching right now you know i tried to torpedo the Zaleski soyuz i think i hit him once and the second salvo would have gotten would, would have finished him off but then the um i think one of our destroyers just shoves a bunch of torpedoes down his throat and that's that 
but they are nice. Again, it is pretty much the same torpedoes that Tirpitz has. I think in the Odin video on Friday, I think I said they were Bismarck torpedoes. Yeah, guys, when I recorded those videos for Friday and Saturday, I was just completely out of it. But, yes, the uh, gear so far, in my experience, has been a very good super cruiser and a very reliable one. And she feels pretty good maneuverability-wise. The only thing is that if you look at both the gear and the Siegfried, for this matter, they sit up pretty high up out the water. They have a very tall side, whereas in ships like the Stalingrad and the Alaska, they sit much lower in the water. So, you know, you do run to the problem of you got a lot of freeboard for the enemy team to shoot at, so you need to be aware of that. And, um, you know, there's a, mis uh, a couple of mistakes that I made uh, with playing the Siegfried, because I did play the Siegfried first. Um, you know, where I did pay for that. But if you're mindful of that and mindful of your angling and stuff, it can be an incredibly tanky ship and a fun ship to play, uh, too. The Agir, so far in the matches I've played in her, I've played about, um, four matches. Well, actually, by the time you're watching this, I've probably played a lot more. But she's a great ship. She's incredibly fun to play. Um, and plus, she's much, 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 much easier to obtain than the Siegfried. The uh, gear is just a million free XP, or you could buy it outright in the uh, premium shop. And a million free XP, it sounds like a lot, but... And for you new guys, it probably is a lot. No, no, it's not probably a lot. It, it is a lot for you newer players, but for you guys that have been around for two, three years, you probably have close to a million free XP lying around if you haven't been using it to grind up um, lines and such. And, you know, again, it's cost more than, let's say, the Missouri did when it first came out because of inflation. People, are, people have been playing it for long, so they're accumulating more free XP, and that's why Wargaming jacked the price up of it. And that is how I managed to get the uh, gear. I didn't spend any money on it. I had the free XP, and I used it to buy the uh, gear. So, for a ship that's a free XP ship, it's, it's a really good ship. It's fun. It's fairly tanky. Um... The guns, again, I can't stress this enough how consistent the guns are. Because even on something like the Stalingrad, with a main battery build, the, the shells on occasion go kind of wherever. And with the uh, gear, you know, I, I'm not saying they never, ever, ever go all over the place. They do. They, they do on occasion. But so much less so, at least from what I've played and what I've been noticing, versus other super cruisers. And it's great. And plus the HE on it, it's very good. You do have the German HE pins, although they are 305mm guns, so I mean, it can pin just about whatever it needs to right there, but it, it does have the special German uh, HE pin values and a pretty good chance of starting a fire. And you know, with the Agir, uh, sorry, with the Siegfried, you have 15 inch guns where you can overmatch the bowels of uh, most other cruisers. But with the Siegfried, you know, you can just burn the crap out of just about everything. And I do have the DPM build still on, and it's been working well for these for just these few matches that I've been playing her. Um, and with the uh, gear, with the consistency of the guns, you probably could go for a range build. And I do imagine for more competitive modes, that is what what's going to have to happen with the uh, gear. Um, and I would imagine it works just fine at the at a at at range too with this dispersion and with the fire rate and the and the consistency of the guns probably would work just fine but the dpm build it's been working really well for me i've had a lot of fun in it a lot of really um heart stopping moments if 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 you will but it's a good ship i do feel like just from the first impressions of it it's it's worth the free xp is it worth the 77 dollars that they're asking for it in the shop i mean 77 dollars on a digital item that, that's a steep price for anything, really, because, you know, $77, you could go buy a brand new AAA game. So, I mean, what you do with with your money that you work for and, you know, you earned it, that's up to you. Um, am I saying, like, drop what you're doing right now and go out and buy it this instant? No, because, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere for a while, at least, um, because these free XP cruises, they, they tend to stick around for, poof, the, the um... Oh god, what's the tier 9 um, Soviet cru uh, super cruiser? Why can't... Uh, Kronstadt, Jesus. The Kronstadt, I mean, that, that thing was around for almost two years before it disappeared. But this is something that you could certainly easily grind to with um, special signal flags. 
that, you know, it's you're not going to be able to grind to it in like a week. I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you that. But if you stay at it, just keep putting free XP to the side. This ship is totally worth saving up for that 1 million free XP to get this ship. And the $77, I mean, if you really play this game a lot and you play this game like a hobby, I would say it, it is worth that. Uh, worth that amount but I'm not saying go out and spend that money on it that's up to you guys if you want to spend that much money on a digital item but for a free XP ship I, I think this is a very 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 good choice I would still pick the Alaska over the uh, gear but this is a very very close second place the Alaska just from and again keep in mind this is just for my first impressions of it but it does seem to be a very 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 good ship in my opinion at least as of now Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the second impressions video for this ship, the Siegfried and the Odin, should be out sometime next week. And for those of you that don't know how that works, um, first impressions video, I just play the first four to five games in the ship. And I normally record my live reaction while playing them. And then the second impressions video, that's more of a actual type of review style video, if you will. But anyway guys, if you did enjoy the video, please drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We're on way to 15,000 subscribers. We should be crossing that goal fairly soon because you guys have been awesome recently. Anyway, guys, hope you're having a great day. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.